Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I don't know if you saw this, but Hillary Clinton's new book, What Happened? What happened? <laughs> what happened? Uh, and in it, she calls Donald Trump, Trump she says uh, Donald Trump she is a creep and that her skin crawled during the debate. He's a creep. I don't know if I'm going to have to challenge the veracity of that statement, Hillary, because I saw this picture. So I'm going to have to challenge the veracity of your he's creep and made your skin crawl. Because he used to make you giggle like a little fun, having fun time person. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely fun having fun time person, Jim. That's at his wedding. You were happy to go to his wedding, weren't you? You're all proud to stand next to him, giggle at him. Look how funny he is. You knew they were taking pictures, right? Yes. That that was fun. It was great. That was just when he was chasing Barack Obama around for his birth certificate. <laughs> this, you know, that's that's that smear that you started. <laughs> um, so that's that's. I just want to say that I, you can't say that when there's this picture. When you're at his wedding, arm and frickin' arm with him, you can't say he creeps you out and made your skin crawl. When that exists, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, you also can't yell at Bernie for staying in the primary till the end when you did it in 2008 yeah. and justified it to anybody that criticized you. Can't do that either. Can't do that either. So, okay, so here's from the so parts of her book got released. Oh, boy. So here, can you say, I'll read it to you. Because we agreed on so much, they didn't agree on so much. <laughs> They didn't agree on so much. They didn't agree on banking. They didn't agree on min- the minimum wage. They didn't agree on fracking. They didn't agree on free college. They didn't agree on a lot of things. Because we agreed on so much, Bernie couldn't make an argument against me in this area on policy, which is, again, just the black is white, up is down, in is side is out. All Bernie did was criticize her policy. That's all he did. That's all he did. Isn't that wild to hear that to hear them say that? Yes, you you mean like she's fictionalizing what really happened in her book <laughs> and the fact that she won't stop it. Like it's been a goddamn year already. Cut it up, remember? And she comes out now. This is August, this is September now. So the last time we talked about, she was at that Codicon or whatever what that thing is called. Remember mm-hmm. where she with they're sitting in the chairs, the high red chairs. Oh yeah. And uh, she at that point she blamed the DNC. You remember that? She said they'd had bad data. They had, they had no data. Remember that? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then there was a they guy. They were bankrupt. And then there was a guy who was in charge of the Yeah, they were bankrupt, she said. And then the guy who was in charge of the, or one of the guys who had something to do with the data at the DNC started tweeting out stuff. No, here's the data that we showed you that you ignored. And then they made him take those tweets down. Did you remember? Did you hear that story? No. No? You're not up on I, that? I yeah. did not hear that part. Yeah. Yeah. So that was back then. So she's blamed everybody so far. She's not in Russia. Millennial feminists. Millen- millennial feminists. That's a fun one. That's, that's my favorite that's one. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> you're a millennial, right? Yeah. And, and a feminist. And you're a feminist, right? I've I've been called that. I, I feel like it's not. I feel like a guy can't make that claim. You know what well, I mean? What is, what is a feminist? Gloria Steinem said that said Bernie, Bernie was, was, a, was an honorary woman, let alone fem- a feminist. feminist. No, he said, she said honorary woman. Oh. Yeah. That's why it's a big deal. Anyway, who cares? So, uh... So she goes, so he had to resort to innuendo and impugning my character. You called him sex. He's sexist. He does. Okay. You know, he's racist. He doesn't black people. Doesn't know how to, what the, what didn't you say? The only thing that you guys said about Hillary, about Bernie Sanders was impugning his character. We've talked about this. When someone's to your left, you don't attack his policies because his policies are better than yours. So you smear him, and that's what you guys did to Bernie. What do you think we didn't see the we we didn't see the campaign? And she's going to do it again right here. I bet you. Well, you know, Jimmy, just that she says impugning my character. Yeah, I couldn't believe on so many times where they were on the debate stage together, and how respectful and uh, yes! going out of his way to be a real human being, not making it gender politics. Not... I don't want to hear about your goddamn emails anymore. Yeah. What about yes! that? The guy couldn't I have been more that. magnanimous. She couldn't have gotten an easier walk in the primary. She could God, God forbid, she had someone who actually had the the fangs out for her, 
or the claws out for her. Anyway, let's get back to this. Well, even when he was asked leading questions too, like he yes. wouldn't take the like he wouldn't take the bait. He's like, I'm not gonna and she's attack gonna... her character. We're gonna talk about policies, and he would he would bring up the list. He's like, I support fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. I support single payer. I support you know she does yes. not. So and, and I'm so sorry, Jimmy. Just that saying resort to innuendo. Yeah, it's like I'm running for office against you. <laughs> thus, I'm impugning your character. Yeah. That's it. He ran against me, so he's impugning my character. Some of his supporters, the so-called Bernie bros, took to harassing my supporters online. It got ugly and more than a little sexist. More than a little. So that means a lot. It was sex. So Bernie supporters are sexist. So she's in, now she's impugning and smearing not only Bernie, but half the goddamn party. You know, Bernie won 23 fucking states. Half the party. She's impugning the people that she's pissed off that didn't support her in the general. You wonder why? Hmm. Look, this is unfucking believable that she's doing this. She's doing the same. He's a sexist. So do you understand why the people still voted for, for Donald Trump after you call him a sexist? Because you call Bernie Sanders a sexist. And if Bernie Sanders is a sexist and Donald Trump is a sexist, then I guess being a sexist isn't that fucking bad of a thing to be. If Bernie Sanders is a sexist and his supporters are sexist, the most progressive motherfuckers in the party, then I, I guess that's not what that word doesn't mean what you think it means. And people dismiss you. And there's a little book. Um, there's a tra- children's story. Maybe your mom read it to you as a kid. I, maybe not. It's called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. So when you do that, that you're the boy who cried wolf, and now you know you know why the right wing makes fun of you, why everyone makes fun of you when you do this, and nobody takes you seriously, because there is a, such a thing in the world uh, as sexism. There is such a thing as misogyny. There is such a thing as those things. Bernie ain't it. Nor his followers. Do, were there people who were assholes to you on Twitter? Join the goddamn club, you fucking victim. Everybody's shitty to people on Twitter. I get called everything. That's that's what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Online harassing harassing my supporters online. Your 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 supporters are still fucking harassing people. Still, they won't let this fucking thing go. You lost to Trump. Go ahead. Well, I got to be honest with you, Jimmy. I don't know why you're saying this is unbelievable. Oh, I no. mean, she blamed everybody yeah. over the span of several months. This is like the greatest hits of scapegoats. You really think this wasn't going to be compiled? No, you're, I guess you're right. You're right. She you know just, what? I, I just have to say it, it doesn't happen often, but she hasn't mentioned the Mexicans. You know, she's mentioned the DNC, she's mentioned Russia, she's mentioned Trump, she's mentioned Bernie, being all the reasons why she couldn't get to office. She hasn't blamed the Mexicans Or white women. White women voted for Trump more than her. And Mexicans did vote for Trump, right? There was what was this like thirty percent of the Latino population voted for Trump? Am I wrong? I thought it was higher than that. Cool. Let's Google it and we'll let's get that accurate number. But in the meantime, I'll read this. It got ugly. And more than a little sexist, when I finally challenged Bernie during a debate to name a single time I changed a position or a vote because of a financial contribution, he couldn't come up with anything. Nobody said health care real loud? No one said that? So really, you, you don't support single payer just because you're dumb? You don't support single payer just because you don't know how the, it works in the rest of the world? Is that why you don't support single payer? You're telling me you voted for the bankruptcy bill to remove bankruptcy protections from individuals from credit card companies? You did that without a contribution? You voted to let Wall Street charge people 35% interest on their credit cards? And you know who gets charged that? The people are in financial trouble. And you voted for that without a donation? You voted for the Iraq war without a donation from the military industrial complex. You voted for the Patriot Act without a donation from Booz Allen. You really, you just, that's, that's how you really fucking feel. Wow. So nonetheless, his attacks cause lasting damage. That's what she says. Nonetheless, his attacks cause lasting damage. Making it harder to unify progressives in the general. So apparently, I was told by lots of people, people who used to be on this show, I was told that you can't vote for Bernie in the primary because he'll get killed in the general because the the, the Republicans will attack him and he's he'll he'll fold. He'll that that'll be it. He's never faced opposition like this. But apparently, the most heavily funded, most well oiled political machine in the history of our country couldn't withstand 
Bernie Sanders, an unknown independent senator from Vermont, running in a prime. That was all it took to take her down? That's what took her down? It wasn't a concern. So she would have been able to handle the right wing smear attack, but she couldn't because she fucking lost to Trump. But Bert, but she was so, so this secular talk, Kyle Kalinske says, I love he tweeted this out. He goes, Hillary, you can't run Bernie in a general. He's so easy to attack and beat. Also, Hillary, I, I believe because I was so easy to attack and beat uh, and beat, I put the blame on Bernie. <laughs> That's exactly, by the way, in the bottom she says, it made it harder to unify progressives in the general election and paved the way for Trump's crooked Hillary campaign. You know what made it hard to unify progressives in the general? When you picked a, picked a fracking lobbyist to be your transition team chief. That may, oh, Ken Salazar, remember that? Maybe maybe you should have done that at the DNC. Maybe, you know what else ha- made it hard to, to coalesce progressives around you in the general? When you tur- didn't let Nina Turner speak, but you did, you didn't let Nina Turner speak, but you did let Michael Bloomberg, a billionaire freaking fascist who instituted stop and frisk in New York City against black and brown people. You let that guy speak, but you didn't let Nina Turner. Or how, maybe you know what else made it hard to coalesce p- progressives around you? The fact that you picked Tim Kaine, someone to the right of you, to run as your vice president instead of someone to the left of you. These are all things you could have did to reach out to progressives, but you didn't. Why? Because your hubris made you into a political moron. You're already political poison. You never, Hillary Clinton does not have the ability to make her poll numbers go up. The minute she starts campaigning, her poll numbers go down. They never go up. They never get higher from the first day she starts. Maybe that's why she didn't go to Michigan and Wisconsin, because she knew if she would have went to Michigan and Wisconsin, her poll numbers would have went even lower. <laughs> so it just turns out she just couldn't beat Donald fucking Trump. Ooh, real quick, uh, got 29% of the Latino vote. Oh. Donald Trump got 29%. Donald Trump got 29%. She doesn't oh. mention them. Isn't that funny? But it's the sexist Bernie bros. She still, she puts that fucking word in there. Bernie bros. And says, more than a little sexist. Why, why, why phrase it like that? Why not say it was really sexist? Why say more than a little? What a weird phrasing, right? So he, co- so he got her. He, she goes on, I don't know if that bothered Bernie or not. He certainly shared my horror at the thought of Donald Trump becoming president, and I appreciated that he campaigned for me in the general election, but he isn't a Democrat. That's not a smear. No, the other thing was a smear. All that other shit I said, though, was a smear. That's not a smear. That's what he says. He didn't get into the race to make sure a Democrat won the White House. He got in to disrupt the Democratic Party. He got in because he saw that the Democratic Party was going to fucking lose to a right-wing demagogue. And guess what you did? You lost to a right-wing demagogue. And Bernie was right, and he tried to pull you to the left, and you wouldn't come. He got in to try to save the goddamn Democratic Party, to try to return it to its roots. He tried to make you a fucking Democrat, Hillary. Isn't that ironic? An independent ran in the Democratic primary to get you to be a fucking Democrat. She goes on. He didn't get into... So uh, he was right that the Democrats needed to strengthen our focus on working families. Ugh. And that there's always a danger of spending too much time courting donors because of our insane campaign finance system. So she makes she's again, she's a victim of the campaign finance system. First of all, this is her just her. She doesn't care how much of a narcissist you think she is anymore. She doesn't. She can't help herself. She is very much like Trump in that regard. She cannot help herself. Do you know this is only going to appeal to about 10 percent of the population? Even Chuck Schumer's done with this shit. Even he said, you know, when you when you lose to Donald Trump, you, you can't blame anybody else. When you spend twice as much money as he does and you have everybody on your side. And Chuck Schumer said, you blame yourself. And Hillary Clinton said, hold my beer. Ha! <laughs> he also encouraged a lot of young voters to get into the political process for the first time, which is extremely important. But I think he was fundamentally wrong about the Democratic Party, the party that brought up so that brought us Social Security under Roosevelt. And guess who tried to make it privatized? Bill Clinton. And guess who repealed the New Deal banking regulations to crash our economy? Bill Clinton. 
You can't bring up Roosevelt without bringing up the fact that your husband fucking repealed the New Deal banking regulations and that you gutted welfare at the same time you passed NAFTA, you son of a bitch. Are you kidding me? The party that brought us Social Security under Roosevelt, which we tried to dismantle, Medicare and Medicaid under Johnson, which Barack Obama also tried to screw over with his grand bargain, which is a cut to Social Security and Medicare, which the Republicans actually had to stop him from doing. Do you see how bad the Democratic Party has gotten? You don't even realize the shit you're bragging about. You and fucking Barack Obama tried to dismantle. Be, uh, peace between Israel and Egypt under Carter. Uh, Broad-based prosperity and a balanced budget under Clinton, which was thanks to a dot-com bubble. And rescued the auto industry, passed health care reform, passed health care reform. So th this gives a perfect example to make one of my favorite points. When the Democrats had control of the House, the Senate, and the White House, they passed health care reform. You know what health care reform they passed? They passed the Republican health care reform. They, re they passed o Romney care, which was thought up at the Heritage Foundation. They didn't pass the fucking Medicare for all, the single payer, the Democratic. That's the Democratic version of a Medicare uh, of health care reform is single payer, Medicare for all, or at least a public option. Barack Obama didn't give us that either. So, so th the health care reform she's bragging about is Romney care, the shit that fucking right wing thought up that we implemented because the Democrats are so bought and paid for now. It's unbelievable, this list of shit she's trying to talk about. And the and impose tough new rules on Wall Street. Oh, my God. Hold on, Jimmy. That one's accurate. I mean, people were so happy with the tough new rules on Wall Street uh, that Obama imposed, they decided to occupy them because they were so impressed. <laughs> Brock's whole cabinet was filled out in an email that came from Citigroup. He then appointed the same people who drove us into the ditch to drive us out. He didn't prosecute one Wall Street criminal, not one, and he made every bank bigger. He did the exact opposite of what he was supposed to do and what people expected him to do, which is why we got Trump. I am proud to be a Democrat, and I wish Bernie were too. I wish you were a Democrat. Mm. You're a Republican. You're a Republican. You 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 are you are uh you are a Goldman Sachs Republican with a rainbow flag. Now that's what Graham Elwood said today on Aggressive Progressives, and I, I concur. I love what this guy Amir I follow. He says this level of denial, dishonesty, and viciousness would be shocking if this weren't written by Hillary Clinton. De denial, the level of denial, dishonesty, and viciousness. Here, I'll give you one last thing on this. because uh, uh, Jake Sullivan, my top policy advisor, told me it reminded him of a scene from the 1998 movie, There's Something About Mary. A deranged hitchhiker says he's come up with a brilliant plan. Instead of the famous eight-minute abs exercise routine, he's going to market seven-minute abs. It's the same, just quicker. Then the driver, played by Ben Stiller, says, well, why not six-minute abs? That's what it was like in policy debates with Bernie. We would propose, we would, we, this is Hillary speaking, we would propose a bold infrastructure investment plan or an ambitious new apprenticeship program for young people, and then Bernie would announce basically the same thing, but bigger. First of all, Bernie introduced an infrastructure plan a year ahead of Hillary Clinton. So that's just a blatant lie again. He actually had an infrastructure plan. He introduced it a year ahead of her. So just lying. So on, on issue after issue, it was, li it was like he kept proposing four-minute abs or even no-minute abs, magic abs. <laughs> that's a that's a great analogy, actually. I mean, using healthcare as an example, you know, Hillary was going to try to uh, work within Obamacare while still keeping the insurance companies happy, whereas Bernie <laughs> wanted to do single payer, something that, like Magic Abs, has never happened anywhere else. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> 
So in it, she says Bernie would announce basically the same thing, but bigger. So whatever they would announce, she's accusing. It was exact as you know, if you followed the campaign, it was the exact opposite. She started to ape. And the only time uh, she started to ape all of Bernie's positions. She's she was a moderate. She was proud to be a moderate, and then all of a sudden, she was a progressive, who got things done. Who's aping who? Bernie never called himself a moderate who wanted single payer. He called himself a progressive. So our friend Katie uh, Helper, she, re- she rewrote that paragraph. So let's go down to the good part. That's what it was like in policy debates with Bernie. We would propose a $12 minimum wage, and then Bernie would announce his support for Fight for 15. On issue after issue, it was like he kept proposing a bold and exciting ideas we would begrudgingly adopt. <laughs> That's what that said. Like minimum wage or TPP. Like minimum wage or the TPP. So that I'm going to read that to you one more time. That's what it was like in policy debates with Bernie. We would propose a $12 minimum wage, and then Bernie would announce his support for Fight for 15. On issue after issue, it was like he kept proposing bold and exciting ideas we would begrudgingly ex- adopt, like minimum wage or the TPP. So that's exactly, if, if Hillary had a better editor, that's what Katie Helper says. If Hillary, because that's how it should read. But of course she, uh, again, black is white, up is down, in is out for Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders, most popular, most popular politician in the country. This is from a Harris, uh, Harvard Harris poll, August 2017. He has a net favorability of plus 18. That's Bernie all the way on the right. This is Bernie here. Next to him is Elizabeth Warren. She has a net favorability of 4%. So the next closest, most popular politician is Elizabeth Warren. Bernie's support is quadruples hers. His net favorabilities quadruple hers. I don't know if you look over here. uh, Who's this? Nancy Pelosi. Minus 16. Hillary Clinton, minus 11. Go go win a presidential campaign with negative favorabilities. Oh, you can't do it? Didn't do it? And, can I uh, point out something, Jimmy? Yes, you can point out something. Number three is Mike Pence. So everybody that keeps saying that impeachment would be a good move politically, number three is Mike Pence. I'll just say it one more time. Number three, Mike Pence. How pathetic the Democrats are that Mike Pence is more popular than Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And so is Rex Tillerson, who's the guy from Exxon, who's our Secretary of State. Wow. The only one more unpopular than Nancy Pelosi on this is Steve Bannon and, and Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has an, a minus 30 net favorability, and the Democrats still couldn't beat him. Think about that. Um, so as, uh, so they got that new website, Verit, right? That Peter Douche uh, launched to support Hillary Clinton. And, uh, Peter Douche, uh, by the way, is now tweeting at it. It's funny. Not Peter Dow, but Peter Douche. Mm-hmm. And he says, Bernie Sanders only appeals to the fringe 92% of the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Douche. <laughs> And then you get an authentication code at Verit to make sure it's not a fake news. Did you know that? When you make posts, you have to get an authentication code first. It's the weirdest website. By the way, I just want to just... Here's some more of the the people in denial. This is Nomi, Nomiki Kantz, right? And uh, she's a friend of the show. She tweeted out a fun fact. She goes, in 1983, neoliberals manifesto Peters blamed unions, said Social Security was wasteful and called for a war on public schools. She tweets that out. That's what that's what happened to the Democrats. They became neoliberals, and that's they got they didn't like unions, they didn't like Social Security, and they didn't like public schools. Well, what's the point of being a Democrat? You know, you're just a Republican. So this guy, who's another one of these tools, these Hillary Clinton tools, who just can't let it go, one of these corporate Democrats who hates progressives, he writes: People who think documents from 1983 are relevant to today's political landscape, if nothing else, is it's amusing to watch. 1958 next. That guy's book collection has to suck. Yeah. That guy has a shitty book collection. Because those those books don't aren't relevant today. They were written no. in the past. Well, you no, know he doesn't have past. 1984. 
You know, you know, aha. Uh -huh. Hey, by the way, Eric, uh, you know what they say, those who don't learn from the past, uh, go to work for David Brock. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he does. All right. Oh, by the way, this is that Facebook thing that was going around. Uh, universal health care coverage is a very radical idea. A pie in the sky, a pony. Yeah, it's like, it's like magic apps. Look at all those. Yeah. Look at all those nations that oh, have look those at, magic apps. Everybody, everybody has this 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 pony that we can't seem to get. Oh, the only one? USA can't have a pony. Everybody else gets a pony. Isn't that funny? And let's, let me just, I'm going to play this for you again just so you dr drill it into your head. The Democrats. The Democrats want you to believe that their party is, of course, wonderful and fabulous and wants to help to save the world and all the rest of this. And they want you to believe that the only problem with the American political system is the Republicans, and more importantly, the corruption of the American political system and the Republicans by the Russians. This, of course, would be the most horrible thing that could come from the current political situation. Because if we allow the Democratic Party to convince anybody, ridiculous they've even convinced themselves, that the primary issue with the American political process is Donald Trump and the Republicans, that validates their capacity to sustain themselves in a disgusting and corrupt fashion. The reality is, the only reason we have Donald Trump as our president and these horrendous Republicans is because of the unadulterated failure and corruption in the Democratic Party. Think about how bad, how unappealing, how offensive Barack Obama and ultimately Hillary Clinton had to be to the American population in order for them to even remotely begin to choose someone like Donald Trump as a better alternative. Think about it, how bad people have to view the level of corruption in the Democratic Party to think of Donald Trump as a remotely preferable alternative. Donald Trump is terrible. The Republicans are offensive beyond comprehension. But the solution is not the Democrats. The solution is a final terminal bypass of these two utterly corrupt political parties. And the Democrats are desperately fighting to try to convince you and everybody else that the only problem is the Republicans and Trump, and that they are quite actually perfect in their own way when they are the ones who are the biggest contributors to the Trump campaign and the Trump problem. Okay, so there you go. Any last words? I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm so, so goddamn sick and tired of these corporate Democrats, and I'm so sick and tired of Hillary Clinton, her fucking sycophantic supporters, you know, supporting a corporatist warmonger. Anything? Should we just let it go? All right. Uh, thank you for watching and supporting the show. Oh, it's so painful, the Democrats, huh? Hey, everybody, we have two live Jimmy Dore shows in September. September 25th, we're in San Diego, and September 18th in Burbank, California. Get your tickets right there. There's a link right there.